Okay, so picking up after Irving Penn, we have Hans Bellmer. Things are going to get really weird. Uh, so Hans Bellmer was a German photographer who around... Um, he was actively working at the beginning of World War II. And he was considered like what they would call like a deviant artist. So <laughs> I think that's what they would call him. Um, so in German society at the time, there was these like really great guys called the Nazis. Just kidding. And, um, you know, basically they were, um, you know, making a awful place for everyone. And um, they were like actively trying to weed out artists that they didn't think um, like really, um, uh, how do you say it? Like how they, they really, they didn't embody like the German psyche, you know? Um, they it wasn't like pro Germany were whatever crap they were trying to, you know, push. So, you know, artists like Hans Belmer, who was a photographer in dealing with these like really bizarrely, uh, ideas of sexuality and just like really screwy things. Um, you know, so they, you know, they would take artists like him and either like put him in camps or just kill him. They killed a lot of artists. Uh, so Hans Belmer fled, you know, he made the right call. I think he went to Paris. He may have gone to New York in the end. A lot of artists who went to Paris eventually went to New York. I'm not sure. But he was this photographer and he's not well known, but he's certainly, um, he's certainly interesting. So what he would do, and again, this is like in the 40s, um, he made this doll, okay, which is a woman. You could definitely tell he had some weird issues going on. And he would put it in all these poses, okay? And he had a name for it, too. I forget what it was. Um, and they're really quite creepy and weird and crazy. Uh, but they're interesting images for sure. So he was this photographer working in Germany, I think in Berlin at the time, and he was making some crazy images, okay? So again, like with Belmer, like could you construct something weird and, um, you know, uh, psychological? Maybe it has this kind of like, psychological gravitas that you know seems active and charged and i don't know maybe you don't have to um but belmer did that and again you know the thing about it is that all the photographers were, were looking at like they kind of staged these to be photographed right so like weston put a piece of lettuce on a table irving collected cigarette butts here we have um Bulmer. Belmer, sorry, um, making this weird sexually charged doll and messing with it, you know, creating these kind of uncomfortable situations. Here has like a little bit of color. He would hand color these as well, which is cool. He'd like paint on them. So if you're like, hey, how do you get color film back in the 40s? Um, well, he didn't. He would make a black and white print and then hand color it. And here he put these dots on it, which I like quite a bit. It's a beautiful photograph. I just love this one. The way he's playing off the shadow in space. Again, lots of issues. But, you know, who doesn't have them? Okay, I'm just going to Go a little quicker. This one's right in. But that hand tinting looks really quite cool. I love this one of the shape. And I've never been able to figure out this shape in the foreground if he painted that on or if it's part of the photograph. It's so exquisite. And then the relationship between this, these two things. Okay, John Fall. 
following that up with some good old American 1970s conceptual art. Um, so John Fall, again, uh, staged these interactions. And what he did was he would interact with the landscape by putting something into it that changed the way that you saw it. Um, this is, he's a Californian artist, like 70s, uh, very cool, um, very interesting. All right, so here he's like lining that up with the trees and then the horizon line. Here he puts this little bit of string. Do, 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 do. Okay. Um, again, here he puts these like little check marks, and he's playing with space and um, how the picture plane recedes, and you know, just all that kind. Of, he's playing these kind of conceptual, visual uh, kind of games with it. They're really quite fun to look at, though. I made this little square. You know, and some you're like, yeah, okay, I get it. And some you're like, oh, that's cool. You know, it's hard to follow Hans Bellman. Um, this one's like really cool because when you look at the image, you go down, and you're going back, 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 back. Here you have these black hash marks. Uh, you know, it's got to be at least 25 feet away. You know, and then he comes back. So it's like, wow, you know, that's cool. When you just think about it spatially, like, wait a second, you know, pretty neat. And that would be an example of like, you know, having a pretty deep f-stop, you know? So think about those kinds of things. Oranges, okay. Uh, hash marks, that's cool. This is neat too. That way you kind of frame within a frame, guys. A uh, little circle, half circle, sorry. Continuing that dip. That's cool. Again, I've never figured out what that was. Was it like a mirror or was it like a tuna can? I don't know. It's neat though. Here's like a squiggle. Okay, almost getting there, but I think before we finish up, I'm going to pause here. We'll come back. And how many slides are left? Maybe there's like 20. Okay, so this will be a three-parter.